Hi, welcome back. Uh, this video is a supplement to 08 bin measurement 2, whereby I showed you how to utilize model map functionality in Costex. Uh, this one is a little bit more advanced because we're using um, some functions that you might not come across before. Um, one very useful function that I use time and time again is the X number formula. Now this X number formula is the same as what you'll see in Excel in terms of getting a specific number from a string of text or a string of numbers. We're just utilizing it in the um, mapping definitions to take a particular number from a parameter. So going back to Costex, I've already set up a structural steel, ooh, what's coming up there? Structural steel model map. Um, I'm gonna scroll down to have a look at what kind of structural steel we have in this particular model. Not a whole lot. Um, structural framing. We got some girders or trusses and we got some basically some structural steel around the perimeter of the roof. Um, for example purposes, I'm gonna just select that universal beam. Now there is only one type of steel, it's a UB. If I scroll across my schedule here, I can see it's a universal beam, the family name. And my level, level names, universal beam, level three, which is the most important one here. It's a 305 millimeters high. Just zoom in there for you a little bit. That's the height of the web. 165 millimeters wide, the height of the flange, and very importantly, I'm showing you or illustrating this X number feature, the 40 kg, even though it doesn't say it there, the last number is 40 kg per meter of this type. So you'll see different last numbers there with respect to different sizes of steel. So to set this up, I'm gonna scroll across, I'm gonna use the comments parameter. Again, that depends on where you input that information. Um, I showed you some additional videos where you might put it in the assembly code or in a, the keynote or it could be even a user defined parameter specifically called in this case case national standard building elements. So that's the folder name. What I always find it quite useful doing is flick between preview and mapping definition occasionally as you're carrying out your mapping definition. Um, and if you do so, you might see that you've made an error and be able to change that. If you don't, you could have made the error but you don't know where because you weren't checking it incrementally. To create a dimension group name, again, I'm gonna utilize my parameter headings here. Let's say I take, if I scroll across, the level two heading and I add in plus. Again, I'm gonna show you to a few dashes. Add in another string of text. So again, by doing that, which I showed you before, quotation marks, a bit of text or even could be just spaces, close quotation marks, plus again, and drag and drop over the actual size of steel. So again, preview, we've got a nice little bit of space with a couple of dashes in there. Um, universal beam, 305 by 165 by 40. Okay, let's populate some of these fields. Again, what dimensions do we have here? We've got a volume, even though I really don't need volume for steel, I'm gonna drag and drop it over. Um, scroll across, it's in alphabetical order, length, drag and drop the length into the length. It's already designated as millimeters here, so I don't have to worry about mapping that as a unit. Um, it's already there. And I also have, if I scroll across, uh, a parameter or a heading called cut length. So what's the difference between cut length and length? Well, if I just click, um, the cut length is essentially the actual length from, in this case, um, from the inside of the um, flange there on the column in terms of the beam over to the other side to the inside of the flange of that column. The length itself is really a nominal length and it includes kind of a center to center calculation there. So if I scroll down, you'll see that the length will be from, from I suppose one center of one column in terms of the beam length to the other center of that particular column. Whereas the cut length stops at the actual flange connection. And it may even be an offset, which there is here, which may be used for a space for your plate or your bolt connection or whatever it is that connects those two members together. So the cut length is the actual length and the other length is your center to center length. So um, what I might do is in the custom name, create an item called cut, cut length. And the UOM is meters lowercase. That's quite important. If it's uppercase, it won't work. And drag and drop the cut length in there. Okay, so again, preview. 
hover over like a 55 meters in terms of length 53 a little bit less in terms of cut length and also a volume which I said before isn't really used for structural steel now I'm here to show you uh, the X number feature so if we just scroll across looking at um, my level 3 name here as I said before that 40 designates the kg or the weight per meter and there's my length so one obviously multiplied by the other uh, would give me my total weight but I'm looking for that weight in tons so I'm going to create a UOM a T again lowercase must be in quotation marks if it's something you're typing in I'm gonna start by creating inserting a function called X number X number I forgot the end open brackets again this is very similar to what you do in Excel and I'm going to drag and drop that level 3 name in so X number open brackets then after I drag and drop it over it's comma and then number three so the number three tells it to take the third number so first second third take the 40 and then I'm going to close my brackets so that is taking that 40 from that string of numbers and then I'm going to divide that by a thousand to convert it to tons because it's in kg 40 kg and I need to convert it to tons so I divide it by a thousand or multiply it by 0 0.001 brackets at the end and brackets at the start to complete that formula then once I've got that that's the actual weight per ton per meter I've got to multiply it by its total length so again that's a complete formula um, I may have to go between map and definition preview and see that everything is okay as I do that it's not showing an error so I've actually constructed that uh, correctly if I put a bracket in the wrong place if I did something incorrectly, I wouldn't be able to preview that. It would tell me that there's an error possibly in that field. Um, so as I was doing before, multiply that function by its length. I'll take the length because it's a little bit higher. And I'll err on the high side. Um, now maybe kick, click preview. Click the little plus, hover over. I can see there's a weight in there, 2,200 tons. Um, I know because I'm somewhat of an experienced quantities of air that that cannot be right it can't be 2,200 tons that's a lot of steel um, it's more like two tons so there's something happening in there and what's happening is when I need to convert a length and I need to multiply it by something that's uh, not a length that's already designated as tonnage or a weight um, it won't do it for me even though I put that units in there as millimeters um, it will work when I'm going from millimeters to meters or millimeters to meters squared, but it doesn't seem to work when I want to go from kg to tons, from tons utilizing a meter length. So I'm actually have to going to tell Costex, open the brackets and divide that length by a thousand to change it to meters. So from changing it or dividing it by a thousand, I'm changing it from millimeters to a meter length. And now if I preview, hover over it, I've got a weight of 2.2 tons. Just to show you some advantages if I have this mapping definition created correctly and automated in a way that it may apply to another folder or to another member. If I scroll up I have some columns. Of course the beams are attached to the columns in this regard. It's also in comments frames there and if I scroll across I can see that my level two name is plate columns and my level three name similar 610 by 210 by 40. So the size or the weight per meter is the same with the dimensions slightly different. Um, let's say for example, I take my universal beams mapping definition. I right click it, I copy it, I scroll back up to my plate columns and even though it's you know, quite different in terms of its family name or its level one name, two name, three name and size. Um, if it's set up correctly, I may be able to use it again. So right click, paste. So I've pasted what was in my beams into my columns. Everything is the exact same. Um, if I click preview, just to see that it works, plus this time it's called plate name because now the plate name is the level two name and the level three name is, well, it's size. And again, it's different. 
hover over it. Um, I've got a length, I've got a volume, I've got a weight at 2.14. Now I do know that's correct um, based on my lengths. I've done the calculations before. What is different here is I don't have a cut length. The reason that's the case is because I actually don't have a cut length here as a parameter, given that the length and the cut length are the same for the columns. A little bit more practice now with the X number function. So I'm gonna scroll back and click the universal beam. Um, I'm gonna move down to my custom name two and I'm gonna create um, a custom name called painting. So I'm gonna paint this steel and my UOM quotation marks is gonna be meter squared. I'm going to scroll across uh, again and I'm gonna take again the same parameter, the level three heading. Actually, before I do that, I want to set up my X number. Open brackets, then take my level three heading. And this time I'm going to take the first number, 305 in that string of numbers. The reason being is because I'm looking for the height of that web, and that's the height. And I'm obviously going to paint either side of that web. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to close that and multiply it by two breeder side. Again, close the formula and divide it by a thousand to change it to meters. So from millimeters to meters. It won't do that automatically because there's no units in against those numbers. Again, close the brackets, see if it's thrown up any error. Not yet. Um, and now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take that function, I'm gonna copy it, I'm going to click a little plus at the end of the formula, I'm gonna paste it. So I'm gonna use the same function, exact same function again, right here. But this time, instead of the first number, I'm gonna take the second number, and that will take that 165, and then instead of times two, I'm gonna multiply it by four being either side of either side of that flange. So top, underside of top, then the bottom, bottom side of the bottom. So two times four divided by a thousand, put brackets around that complete, this is a little tricky one now, um, around that complete formula, and I'm gonna multiply it by its length. Now this should work without dividing the length by a thousand because it's in millimeters converting to meters squared and if I click preview, click the plus, hover over it there I've got painting 69.87 meters squared um, for those four members each about 13.7 meters long. Take it from me, I've done it by hand and that is correct. Now again, it takes a little bit of time to get used to that X number feature, but you can see how useful it could be. Again, if I wanted to copy that map, map and definition and paste it up here. Preview my plate columns. I also have painting there of 110 meters squared, which is probably correct. Thank you.